Mr. P's Science and Math Podcasts. For more science and math concepts, search me out on iTunes by typing Papa Podcasts. You can contact me at papapodcasts at gmail.com. Other Papa Podcast titles include Chemistry Podcasts, Math Podcasts, which look at quadratic functions, polynomials, trigonometry, linear mathematics, and physics podcasts. Thank you for watching. Average speed. Relating speed to distance and time. If you are traveling in a car that travels 80 kilometers along a road in one hour, we say that you are traveling at an average of 80 kilometers per hour. This 80 kilometers per hour is represented by as the speed of our object. And if you look at our speed of an object, there are always two sets of units, a distance and a time. Hence, in order to calculate speed, you take your distance and you divide it by your time. Some SI quantities and units. So, if we're looking at distance, quantity symbol is D. Example of uh, some units, millimeters, centimeters, meters, kilometers. Uh, and unit symbols for each one, mm, cm, m, and km. Uh, for my American viewers, I'm really sorry that I'm using the, uh, the metric system, uh, but please bear with me. Uh, time, we're using the letter T. Sample units, seconds, minutes, hours, years. And the symbols, S, M, I, N, H, Y, R. And for speed, we are going to use the letter V. And please do not mistake speed for velocity. They are two completely different uh, types of terms. And for speed, we're looking at just two examples, meters per second, kilometers per hour. These are the two most common speed units that we will be looking at. Equation for average speed. The average speed, we're going to use the letters V, A, V. So, we use V for speed, and we use the letters AV to represent the average speed. So, average speed is the total distance divided by the total time for the trip. Therefore, the speed V is distance D divided by time T. Here's the equation. VAV is equal to delta D over delta T. And... For those who remember their math in terms of uh, calculating slope, this D, or this delta, represents change in. So if we have delta D, we are looking in at the change in the distance. So we are going from one measurement, so one distance unit, to another distance unit. We're going from we're looking at a change in time. So we're at the same time, whenever, whatever distance is our initial distance, that is gonna be our initial time. Which means that once we get to our final destination, which is our D2, this is gonna represent our second time unit that we have. And most of the times, our initial units are going to be at zero. So delta D, is equal to the change in distance. So delta D is equivalent to taking our second distance, our final distance, and subtracting it by our initial distance. So D1 is one distance measurement, D2 is the later distance me uh, measurement. And as we said before, D1 is often zero. So what we're doing, our delta D, our delta D is really our final distance, so our distance our final distance, subtracted by whatever we distance we initially started with. So we're going to take our final, subtract it by our initial. Delta T is equal to our change in time. Sometimes it might be, we might be using the following terms. It might, in a, in a problem, it might say the calculate the elapsed time or might be referred to as period of time. So delta T is our change in time and again, we are looking at 
our final time subtracted by our initial time. And as we said before, usually your initial time is often at zero because it usually is when we start our timer. So it's kind of like when we're hitting, hitting the stopwatch to start a race. If we're looking at the stopwatch at the start of a race, it's always at the zero mark. And then we reach whatever time we're reaching. Instantaneous speed is a speed at which an object is traveling at any particular instant. It is not affected by its previous speed or by how it has been moving. So instruments um, that measure instantaneous speed, speedometer or a radar gun. So if we look at these two, these are the only ways we can actually really calculate an instantaneous speed. We have the police officer who might be trying to catch speeders at that particular moment. And if you're looking within the car, whatever speed is being shown, wherever the uh, speedometer meter, that the, the, the actual uh, the ticker is actually showing at, that's really the actual instantaneous speed of an object. If the instantaneous speed of a car remains the same over a period of time, then we say that the car is traveling at a constant speed. The average speed of an object is the same as its instantaneous speed if the object is traveling at this constant speed. So instantaneous speed is different from constant speed. But of course, if the, um, sorry, the instantaneous speed is different from the average speed. But if the object is traveling consistently, so if, if, imagine you having your car in cruise control. So your car is in cruise control at 100 kilometers per hour and it doesn't change over that period of time that you keep your vehicle at 100 kilometers per hour, if you're keeping that consistent or keeping that as your constant speed, then yes, your instantaneous speed is the same as your average speed. But you can, it can only be the same if you are traveling at a constant speed. 